Hi, I'm Ed Piffard, and I've been a gardener for 30 years here in Southern California. Today, many plants in Southern California are not native at all. I took my own yard and recreated what grew there 400 years ago. I became an ungardener. Hi guys, follow me. This episode examines pool to pond conversion. Pool to pond conversion is the perfect example of ungardening. So originally the pool was a 12,000 gallon regular swimming pool and nobody swam in it anymore. So I decided to turn it into this beautiful pond that attracts wildlife. So oxygenating plants will be your key to doing this because they provide the oxygen that the fish will need. You can't really imitate a swamp because you have steep sides. So what I did was I suspended the pots from the coping. The idea eventually is to have a clear pond. This will happen once the nitrates are all used up. I also put in these cool fish from China called hyphen sharks. Hyphen sharks is a must for this kind of pool because they will eat the algae and clean the place up. Eventually I'd like to put in uh, catfish and maybe uh, bass. Frogs would be fantastic. San Diego County doesn't have a lot of lakes. We can use the native plants uh, further north in California, so I, I have Sagittaria, which can be eaten. It's known as Wapato. The Indians would eat it just like a potato. I also have Brandy Bottle. Brandy Bottle is a native lily that produces alcohol instead of carbon dioxide in the flower. So you can drink it, <laughs> but uh, the better use for it is it has these beautiful seeds that you can use just like popcorn, which is what the Indians did. There are not a lot of native lake fish in San Diego County. Mostly we have trout and used to be salmon, but these things need a very strong current. Crawdads are not necessarily native, but the great thing about crawdads is they clean the pool bottom. Now, I have a son-in-law who goes ahead and swims in this, believe it or not, and he's put his feet on the bottom of the pool and says it's relatively clean. But ultimately, over time, the leaf litter will start to build up. That's where you want a crawdad. The crawdad will clean the whole thing. The best part about a crawdad, of course, is that you can eat it. Once the plant nutrients are in balance, and once you have the perfect balance of fish, you don't have to do anything in the future. It's an amazing thing about human beings. We like to watch entropy in its purest form, like flowing water or fire. Or when you see fish, it has the same effect on you. Watching the water, watching the plants, watching these things grow and interact, you don't get better joy than that. At night I have bats. During the day I have dozens of different varieties of dragonflies. And I don't have any mosquitoes. Butterflies come in to drink the water. Bees and all kinds of pollinators show up. The place has just come alive. My philosophy behind ungardening is to take the human control out of it. Ungardening is giving it back to nature. Nature sometimes needs a helping hand and you're in on the game, but you're not in control. And not being in control is incredibly meditative. It fills your mind with activity and at the same time lets you know you're not in control. But what a result. You're part of something bigger and being part of something bigger is the key to being happier. You start to, to see textures in a different way. You start to see the layers of different leaves and foliage and things work in a different way. You start to become sensitive to the way nature really looks instead of the way you want it to look. A neighbor down the street from me, Judy Linser, had turned her pool into a pond and the thing that was a clincher for me is that when she said her grandkids still swam in the pond. For all of you that are interested in ungardening, I would encourage you to join the California Native Plant Society. They meet here in San Diego every month in Balboa Park. One of my best friends is Greg Rubin, who is one of the premier native plant landscapers in San Diego County. We both learned a lot from each other. It was fun to see his gardens, then to do my own and share information. In future episodes, I'd like to take you all onto my favorite places in San Diego County where some of the rarest plants in the world live. I want to show you how these plants live together and how they can be incorporated in your garden too. Join me next time and let's ungarden together.